Depression and anxiety are common problems in society. Uh, some people think that they're increasing in presentation because of society, because of the lives we lead. But let me tell you something about uh, both of them, uh, something that I think is valuable uh, for you to understand, either because you may struggle with them or because someone you love or work with may struggle with them. First, let's address the issue as to whether or not depression and anxiety are truly different from each other. Uh, let me first tell you that the same parts of the brain are implicated in both of those problems. The same kinds of medications are used to treat both of those uh, problems. The same kinds of psychotherapy or counseling are used to treat both of those problems. How different are they from each other? In large-scale population-based studies, people who have anxiety are typically depressed, and people who are depressed are typically anxious. Let me put it another way. People who worry, people who are uncertain about what's coming next in their lives, typically feel helpless or hopeless to manage those adversities. And people who feel helpless or hopeless to manage adversities in their lives typically worry about what the future holds for them. So it shouldn't surprise us that depression and anxiety are really two sides of the same coin. They're a sense of internal discomfort, a worry, an unhappiness, a sense of hopelessness or helplessness. They really go hand in hand with each other. So that being said, understanding how similar they are, let's also try and understand how biology and experience impact them. Both of them are very easily influenced by experience. This is not to argue that they don't have a biological basis. We know from genetic studies that problems with depression and anxiety are much more prevalent in some families than others. We know that people come into the world with a pre-program making them more or less vulnerable to the experience of stress leading to depression and anxiety. But how does the mind play a role? What does the mind have to do with depression and anxiety? And let me tell you about uh, two studies. Uh, first, a simple study uh, with placebo, uh, with a medication that isn't a medication. Uh, if you give a placebo to a group of schizophrenics, they're not benefited. If you give a placebo to a group of hyperactive, impulsive children, for the most part, they're not benefited. But if you give a placebo to someone with anxiety or depression, in research studies, over 50% of those people will return a month later and tell you how much they've been benefited by this placebo, this nothing pill. In drug studies today, we do placebo washout such that we don't end up approving drugs for depression and anxiety that really work little better uh, than placebo. So why does placebo work? Because we know that how you think about your experiences, how the mind processes what the physical brain is going through is a powerful phenomena in how you choose to look at your experiences. This is why counseling for depression and anxiety, typically mild to moderate depression and anxiety, is as effective as medication, and if not so, more effective, because in some studies when the medicine stops, people regress, and yet when the counseling stops, if they've been successfully taken through a course of coping with depression and anxiety, their improved functioning remains. So the takeaway message is biology is not destiny, but it does affect probability. If you or a loved one struggle with depression and anxiety, keep in mind they're two sides of the same coin. Keep in mind that how you think about your experiences can and is a powerful force in helping you cope with these kinds of adversities. This is Dr. Sam Goldstein for Common Sense Science.